Hello, fourth graders. Good to see you today. We are continuing our reading of Out of My Shell by Jenny Goble. I am loving this book. I'm learning about turtles. I'm learning about the heroine of this book who has some challenges in her life and how she's trying to cope with those challenges. Um, the family dynamics, if you will. So we were at a place in the book where her aunt and the aunt's twin three-year-old boys have arrived, which means the household, her grandparents' home is going to be even busier. So let's see uh, what's happening. We're on page 70. We're going to start at the bottom of page 70. We pretty much read this yesterday, but we're going to start there and uh, continue on. Seeing what Grandpa said to be true, Grandma squeezed his hand and in return let Lane go. Meanwhile, Aunt Michelle was cornering Mom. She splayed a hand across her chest and shook her head indignantly. It wasn't hard to imagine what she was saying. Aunt Michelle and Dad had never really gotten along. She had to be bursting with grievances against him that the divorce freed her to share. That gnawed at me. I felt angry on his behalf, but watching her pin my mother down the way she was, it occurred to me that MOB's sudden arrival might not be all bad. Aunt Michelle would keep mom occupied and the twins would keep Lainey out of my hair. Maybe they would forget all about my disappearance this morning and I could focus on preparing to confront Mr. Shaw. I quietly slipped away. Once I was alone in my room, I started thinking about the sea turtle again. How can I put together a project without access to my computer and a printer? Grandma and Grandpa weren't exactly technology junkies, but I needed facts. With the mob here and everyone catching up, my chances of getting a ride to the library were nil. And my solo ride on the trolley hadn't exactly gone over well. What I really needed was dad here. He'd know what to do about the loggerhead. He'd have more information and he'd know how to help her. I considered giving him a call, but there was still no way I could fake being happy over the phone. In person, on the other hand, I wouldn't have to pretend. If he were here, I would be happy. Maybe he could come for a visit. Maybe for my birthday, then the summer wouldn't seem so terribly long. I almost didn't want to think about it though. It was too much to hope for. Plus my birthday was almost a week away. How many times would the turtle turn away again before then? I shifted my thoughts to what I could do now. I had the photo I'd snapped on my phone at the aquarium. It wasn't impressive enough to persuade anyone. My conversation with Mr. Emerson had proved that, but I could make a poster with the facts it provided. It wouldn't be as attractive as colored photos and informational graphs and charts, but maybe it would do the trick. In a few short minutes, I've raided Mom and Lainey's room for art supplies and was back in mine. I spread a large sheet of paper, poster board would have been better, but I had to work with what I had, and Lainey's colored pencils across the floor. I was drawing a big green L for loggerhead at the top of the paper when Aunt Michelle knocked on my door. She entered without giving me a chance to welcome her in. Lainey's stuffed sloth was in one hand. Lainey's suitcase was in the other. I knew what she was going to say before she opened her mouth. I'm bumping your sister out so I can bunk with your mom. Isn't that fun? Sisters must stick together, right, Olivia? Friends come and go, she said, then murmured, as do husbands, apparently but sisters are forever. I kept my mouth shut, but the look on my face must have said it for me. Or we can put the twins in here, Lainey, and you can take the pull-out couch downstairs, if that's what you'd prefer, she said in a not-so-friendly voice. Generally, I like my aunt. She's fun and energetic. She wears bright colors, and when she talks, people listen. Her ideas are sometimes off the wall, but at least she's effective. At the moment, though, she wasn't my favorite person in the world. When I finally stopped glowering and lowered my chin, she said, I'll just drop these here then, and dumped Lainey's stuff at the end of my bed. 
Aunt Michelle paused and looked me over for a good long time. She examined the paper and colored pencils in the bright letter L. Her lips bunched to one side and the skin around her eyes squinched together. I curled inwardly under her evaluation. How are you doing, Olivia? She asked, adding weight to each word. My tongue felt like a rolled up ball of cotton inside my mouth. Fine, I choked out, I'm fine. My heart was heavy inside my chest and I felt on edge about everything. Mom and dad, her being here, and at the moment, the turtle most of all. Aunt Michelle smiled too sweetly and batted her lashes at me. I'm glad to hear that, she said. She obviously didn't believe me. My aunt wasn't gone five minutes when she came barging back in. By then, my piece of paper read, logger. There's someone here to see you, my aunt said, but don't take too long. Your sister and the twins want to watch a movie with you. Someone was here to see me? Of course, I should have guessed who it would be, but it still surprised me to see Aiden standing on the front stoop. Hi, I said, hoping I didn't sound as anxious as I felt. I wanted to tell him everything and nothing all at once. Aunt Michelle had followed me like a lost puppy and was practically breathing down my neck. I glanced over my shoulder and she held her ground. Apparently, she had no intention of giving Aiden and me any privacy. Don't forget, Lane and your cousins are waiting, she said in a sing-songy voice. Aiden's eyes darted to her and back to me. Uh, my grandpa said you came by yesterday. I was hoping we could talk. I bit my bottom lip while my aunt tapped her foot impatiently on the floor. It's not really a good time, I said, wishing I could make plans for later. The last thing I wanted, though, was for my aunt to know I was sneaking out at night. Aiden's expression clouded. Okay, I'll be around the entire day, he said, adding emphasis to entire, in case you change your mind. Catching his meaning, I nodded quickly and shut the door. He would be on the beach tonight. Come join us, Olivia, Aunt Michelle commanded. I'm sure everyone is ready to start the movie now. Sure, I said. My footsteps into the family room were made heavy by both the brush off I'd just given my friend and the thought of abandoning my turtle project. All I could do was keep my fingers crossed that I'd be able to sneak out and meet Aiden after dark. Chapter eight. The hard upper shell of a turtle is called a carapace. Well, there you go. Didn't know that. The afternoon and evening dragged on and on with the movie, dinner, board games, and family time. Lainey was close on my heels when the twins' eyelids finally got heavy and Aunt Michelle shooed everyone off to bed. Ah, my old room, my sister said once we were upstairs. She then proceeded to make herself right at home. It was never your old room. It was our old room, and now it's mine. You're just visiting. I knew I was being petty. It wasn't my room or Lainey's. The house belonged to Grandma and Grandpa, but I couldn't help myself. I was grumpy that the mob had eaten up the entire day, and I hadn't been able to talk with Aiden or work on my project. Lainey carefully set the letter to Olive on the nightstand, scrunched up her face at my unfinished logger paper, rolled it up, and spread out her own clean white sheet. She took over the colored pencils and the floor space by the bed and started working on a new list. Restraining Restraining an eye roll, I walked to the window and stared longingly at the beach. Lainey dropped her pencil and coiled into a ready position. Can we go down there? I stiffened. I had to choose my words carefully. I desperately wanted to meet Aiden and watch for the turtle again. But slipping out would be tricky with my sister around. When I couldn't think of anything better to say, I settled on redirection. What's this list about, I said, feigning interest. Oh, Lainey repositioned herself on the rug. I'm making a list of my favorite mystery creatures. I think you mean mythical creatures, I corrected. What? Mythical creatures, not mystery creatures. Her face darkened. It's all right, Lainey, just go on. She nodded, but instead of talking, she shoved her list at me to read. 
one unicorn, two dragon, three fairy, four mermaid, five yeti. These are great, Lainey, really. Then I read the next few lines and wondered if Mystery Creatures was the right heading after all. What's an elephant, though? Did you mean elephant? And what is this, Porse. An elephant, an elephant is a cross between an elephant and a cat. I see. So a Porse is a cross between a pig and a horse. Lainey nodded her head enthusiastically. Okay, I smiled weakly. Do you want me to help you come up with a few more? I told myself I was just being nice to her, so I wouldn't feel guilty when I ditched her later. But I must admit, after a while, I was having fun. How about a bumble lion, a cross between a bumblebee and a lion? Can you imagine it sting? Lainey's eyes went wide. Couldn't be any worse than getting eaten by a squidopus, I countered. What's that? Lainey's eyes opened even wider. A cross between a giant squid and an octopus. Then a dark idea hit me. I'm not proud of it, but I was desperate to keep Lainey off the beach that night. If I had to keep track of her, I wouldn't be able to watch for the turtle. It's half octopus, right? Great, now I sounded like Aunt Michelle. I went on. So we can crawl up on the beach for a few minutes, but only at night. It uses its um, nine tentacles. Thanks to Dad's Forester Family Fabulous Facts, I knew an octopus had eight arms and a giant squid had eight arms, plus two feeding tentacles, 10 in all. Nine tentacles sounded about right for a squidopus, but the thought of Dad sharing kernels of information nearly derailed me. My mouth went dry, but my desire to go down to the beach alone was overpowering. Yeah, it um, crawls to shore with its eight arms and it shoots its feeding tentacle out to find prey. The tentacle has these tiny sharp tooth suckers that I grabbed her leg for effect. Stick in your skin as it wraps around you and drags you back into the ocean. Of course, well, you probably don't want to know about that, I said, peering at Lainey out of the corner of my eye to see if it was working. About what? She asked, eyebrows springing up. Well, it's just that not everyone thinks they're mythical creatures, but you know, only 5% of the ocean has been explored. People used to think giant squids were just a myth too. Lainey's lips parted in surprise. You mean? Yeah, I said gravely. No one has captured a squidopus on video yet, but there have been sightings. Not far from here, in fact. I thought about laying it on even thicker, telling her how the feeding tentacle combs the beach for victims, then reels the prey toward its sharp beak and slices them into bite-sized pieces. But Lainey looked sufficiently terrified already. So as not to be too obvious, I threw out a few more mystery creatures before testing to see if the image of a squidopus had stuck with her. I came up with a dooster, a cross between a duck and a rooster, and one that she really liked, the slot herd, which was basically a sloth and a bird wing, and with bird wings. Then Lady said, how about a dirtle, a cross between a dog and a turtle, two of my favorite animals? Pursed my lips together, two of my favorites also. I couldn't take it any longer. I had to get outside. What if I missed seeing the turtle already? What if Aiden had come and gone? After clearing my throat, I announced, it's time to sleep. I went the extra mile of guiding her off the rug and tucking her into bed. I prayed she wouldn't say anything as I tipped her out the door. Where are you going, she asked. I straightened my shoulders and swung to face her. I tur I'm turning off the light, then I'm going outside for a little while. Being honest with her, engaging her reaction was the only way I could be certain she wouldn't pretend to sleep and then sneak out after me. To the beach, she asked. Yes. I could see she was mulling it over. When she clutched her stuffed sloth and pulled it closer, I knew she was thinking about the squidopus. Be careful, she whispered, and ducked farther under the covers. Don't worry, I said, and quickly clicked off the lights. I didn't want her to catch a glimpse of the smile creeping onto my face. I will. As I snuck outside, I thought about Lainey. At six, she knew the difference between what was real and what wasn't, but the line was still blurry. In some ways, I envied her. I remembered what it was like to believe in magic and fairy tales and happily ever afters. Maybe it was worth believing in monsters under the bed and the boogeyman if you could still have unicorns, friendly dragons, charms, and enchantments. Aiden was nowhere to be found, but there was another piece of sea glass waiting for me at my hideaway. As I approached the dunes, it winked at me in the moonlight. Thinking it strange that yet another one had appeared, 
I slipped the mermaid tear into my pocket. Stop right there, and tomorrow we will begin with um, page 82. Thank you so much, fourth grade students. Hope you have a really good day, and I'll see you tomorrow.